Okay, what's up everybody? There's a couple of people requested a, a sharpening how-to video. And um, so right now I guess is as good a time as any to do it. Um, I have a chain here on this saw that has a little bit of life. You know, I've used it a little while, so it's a good example of certain things that I do or don't do. And how I sharpen these in my methods are not necessarily the right way. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they're the wrong way. Or not wrong, but not the best way. Let's put it that way. This is just how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. I'm sure someone's going to come on here and slam me, like say, oh, you don't know how to sharpen or whatever. But I'll tell you what, this works for me for the 16, 17 years that I've been messing around with this stuff. Um, so I like to hand file. I don't like to sharpen with a grinder or anything like that because I feel like it messes with the temper of the tooth if you're not really careful. And that, and I sharpen so often, it's quicker to sharpen a chain than it is to change a chain. As long as it's not like grenaded and totally destroyed. And on that note, the best, biggest tip I can tell someone about sharpening a chain is don't let it get to the point where it's destroyed. You know, where it's really just gummed up and bad. Um, this is 72 LGX Oregon chain. Uh, I don't know how long I cut with this, how many times I've sharpened it, I couldn't tell you or anything like that, but let's, I've got a little camera, well, phone holder here, I'm just trying to figure out a way or a place to set you, I haven't really decided yet, I'm working on that here, so you just bear with me for a quick, quick second, I might be able to put your, oh yeah, look at that. All right, we can zoom in just a little bit, open the door a little bit, and that's going to put us right in the sweet spot. Okay, so um, first things first, get yourself a good file. I like this one here is like a leftover, I think this is just an Oregon file. I usually use, um, I like preferred, or our nice files, um, and I like... Uh, God, what's the other one? Preferred is not bad. Timber Savage isn't bad. The big thing is down here in the, 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 uh, this part of the file. They're making that real weak nowadays. So, um, you get to push in, you know, some people, you're out in the woods, you can't, it's harder to do the two, you know, the, the two-handed style. I would call it where you have two hands on the, the file. Most of the time you're just holding the saw on a stump and, you know, doing your thing. Well, it'll bend down here. Um, as for handles, this is a chopped off axe handle. I've had ones that are made out of chopped off sapling. I have ones that, you know, little wood ones and plastic ones. I mean, it's whatever works for you. It doesn't really particularly matter. Um, this chain here, you can tell that some of the cutters are like, see this cutter here has a little more sharpened out of it than this one. And the reason it's like that is because... Maybe I hit something or nicked this one, so I sharpened it down to the point where I have a nice, even cutting edge all the way across. There's no, like the point's not wore off it or anything. No, I got rid of all the damage on it. Some people will say, well, if you took that tooth that far, you have to take them all that far so they're even. Not necessarily, man. I mean, you're going to notice a little bit of difference in when you cut. You know, maybe it'll want to cut to the left or the right, you know what I mean? But for the most part, it, it's, as long as it's not this... Like you have everything on the left sharpened halfway and everything on the right side of the cutter sharpened three quarters, you're going to notice it more, you know, one way or the other. But if it's just a tooth here and there, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's no sense. And I'd rather have that tooth knocked back farther and sharp than left out and partly dull or take a bunch of teeth that are perfectly fine. Because sometimes you catch something, it just, you know, a little rock or something just dings one or two teeth and it's not worth destroying the whole chain over that so the biggest thing is you just want my angles as you can tell i don't know if you can see this but on these cutters there's a line can you see it right there behind my big finger there's a line that's typically your angles i use that just as a gauge um that's where it comes factory if i'm cutting hardwood i'll square you know real hard like hickory and stuff i might square that up a little bit more like this i'm into pine and stuff i'll steepen it up more like that the reason you do that is, the steeper you go, the more aggressive it'll be. The more square you go, 
it's less aggressive and I feel like it'll hold an edge a little bit longer. So, but um, you just, some people say you gotta twist the file as you push, no. See, see how the file is, um, I don't believe you do, but see how the file has that twist to it already? You know, you're just gonna, and that tooth is done. I can tell just by how it feels, honestly. But um, I like to tap my file, gets the filings out of it, move to your next tooth. So I'll just go through and we'll sharpen this side. And this hasn't, it, it needed sharpen, but not real bad. I mean, you can go away with cutting for a while yet before you had to sharpen it. So I'll just go through these and let you guys watch it. I'm trying to watch through the camera to make sure you're seeing I'm not pulling it past. So I apologize if I do that. And I'll, when I switch the saw around, I will show you um, what I'm looking for in the face of the tooth. Because there is a the shine on the front of the tooth. There's a way to tell that you've got everything. And um, you don't always have a vise like this. A lot of guys have service trucks have a vise on the back. You can do this. I'm out in the woods all the time. They have that little vise you can pound into the log and clamp the saw down. I don't necessarily carry that. It's extra weight. Don't have time. I just find somewhere flat and nice. Get the saw laid out and I'll lay over the top of the saw and I'll just sharpen, you know, pushing on the file with one hand. Like I said, you got a good file that's good and sharp. And as long as the chain's not too trashed, you're just fine. It'll work just fine. So... Like I said, once you, right there, I know I've hit that tooth before because I can tell the file's cutting. Okay, so we're sharp all the way through. Clean my file. Now, let me zoom this back out. Fingers dirt don't have, won't work right. And we're gonna switch the saw head around. I'm trying to do this without bumping things, I apologize. So, all right, now, let me show you Oh crap. All right, one, some, one thing I want to show you. Now, you're wondering how you can tell. I can tell by feel just because of how much, you know, over the years I've developed the feel for it. I don't know how to explain it, otherwise, you can just tell how it's cutting. But when you look at that tooth, let me see. Oh, I gotta get a flashlight. Do you see? You see how the whole tooth is shiny all the way, all the way up in here, up into the top even. And I use my gauge for, to get the gullet or whatever you want to call it. If your, if your file, if your file's riding down into your drive links here, like these, these straps, not the drive link, but the strap that ties the chain together, you're cutting too deep. But if you're also walking up off the top of the tooth, then the top of this tooth, see how it's nice and round in there? Here, here's the best way to show this. Let's try to show it this way. Um, work with me. I'm trying to do my best I can for you guys. Like I said, a lot of what I do is feel. There's gauges for this, but you see that file? See how it's there? You don't want it cutting up here like this. You don't want it up here like this because what it's going to do, it's going to make the cutting edge up here too steep and it's not going to want to cut. But if you cut way down in here and start getting down into the drive of the chain, down in here in the strap, it's going to make that cutter edge up there too steep and it's going to bite and grab real bad. And depending on the species, you know, same with your angle. Softwood, you can go steep. Hardwood, you want to flatten it out a little bit. That's how it works for me. It doesn't necessarily have to work for you that way. Like I said, you'll get a feel for it. And um, so let's do this side, and then I'll explain how I do the, um, the uh, oh, come on, what's the word? I'll explain how I do the um, rakers. That's the word. That's the word. We zoom in again. Sorry, I'm gonna zoom in, put you about right there if I can. I'll just let you see. It's almost like a grittiness, a little more grittiness, 
and all of a sudden it'll get real smooth. And you notice how I rotated that file a couple times? It's because I was looking for the sweet spot in the file. As you use a file, obviously one part of the you know will get dull or filled with crap. So as you rotate, you'll feel one side it just cut real nice. You don't want to have to put much effort into it. And there you and that's another one. Now see this tooth is damaged. Nothing wrong with it. It's damaged back here. You see, you still got plenty of cutter head on it. And even when I get past that, I'll still use it as long as the chain's cutting good because it's just that one tooth. And that's probably from when I got the saw pinched or I had to chop it out of a log. I probably hit it with my axe right there is what did that. Sorry if it don't look the best this way. I'm kind of awkward. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. So I'm just going to go through this pretty quick here. Since I showed you the other way. Once again, I just do it by feel. Get my angle by the look, comparing it to that line that's already on the tooth. And you'll notice, yeah, I don't go even, you know, I might not do, might only do two strokes on one tooth. Might do three on another tooth. I don't believe in that. There's a lot of guys that are going to say otherwise about that, but you're just going for the feel. These ones were getting a little steep on me. Or we're getting not steep. They're a little too square. I apologize. Wrong word. I should have took the sweatshirt off before I started this. It's hot down here. And you know you can look at it every time it, you know if you're not sure but like I said after a while you'll just get a feel you can tell when that file is cutting that whole tooth nice and evenly and I'm not putting a ton of pressure on this you know some people put a wicked amount of pressure on there and you don't need it you got a good sharp file it's gonna cut just fine okay we're all the way through all right, now, my rakers. No, I don't need to do anything to these rakers. I can just tell by looking at them. Straight out of the box, I hit them two strokes. I used, like to use a triangular file like this. I just, you know, they have those little flat files. I just like using these. This is a Nicholson. Uh, actually, this one is a Williams. I have a Nicholson in a truck. This is a Williams Slim Taper. I just like them. They're nice because when you're doing this, you don't have a big square edge that can ride over and catch that tooth, especially when they're brand new. And when I do these, let me zoom back out. When I do these, I'm gonna make someone sick here. I was bouncing around. Uh -oh. There we go. When I do these, all right, say I'm gonna do these ones on the left side of the bar, the left side. I'm saying this is the left because the power head they're sharp because the power heads back here I'll say you know if I was standing at the saw looking out at this would be your left cutters these bigger right cutters see that you know they're sharp I just tested it on my finger so but what you do with a raker is moderate pressure and it, the key is this try to do it evenly because this is what will really gauge whether you get a lot of chatter or not but when I start out I'll pinch this tooth with my finger so the file cannot ride into that tooth and right out of the box, I do two. I just go one, two. And I didn't push there because I'm trying not to, um, I don't want to change the rakers. I got them where I want them. Then after I sharpen two to three times, you can just tell it'll start to cut a little slower. I'll go through it. I'll take a pass or two, depending on how it's cut. Now I just want to go a little more aggressive today. Okay, so I just go one. And I'll do every two. One. And a good way to gauge it is, sometimes you can't tell because obviously you're, we're human. If you don't push, that's where the human error comes into it. Look at the size of the shiny. Hold on, I'm going to go way in and I'm going to come out to so try to focus. The size of that shiny square. I look at the size of that and compare it to each one. And that's how I know that I'm pretty similar. Because sometimes, see that one? No, no, it wasn't. It's the same. I just had dirt on it. Every once in a while you'll miss one or something that's a little bit smaller. These all look pretty good. I got it pretty well on. But that's how I sharpen that with my rakers. So, once again, a lot of it's feel. That's not hard. I mean, I know a lot of guys that, you know, friends of mine that will cut firewood that are kind of like, eh, 
I don't know how to sharpen a chain. It's, it's just something. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it's real simple. You sharpen it, but don't cut worth crap. You know you did it wrong. It's kind of like cooking food. You just toss it, or don't toss the chain, but you know, you just start over, basically. You know what I mean? If you're cooking something that tastes horrible, you trash that and start over. But, you know. And um, other than that, I can tell it's, this is a brand new bar, and this chain's getting a little war. Because see the play in it this way? That means your drive links underneath there are starting to get a little worn. They're a little under their tolerance. So what you, you know, if your chain gets dull, it'll start to walk on you like this. But the rails are pretty square on it because when you push down and rock, it doesn't move. So this chain got a lot of life on it. So, all right. I hope that clarifies. Um, obviously, you want to try to be as even as you can when you can, but you can't always. Like I said, you damage a tooth. My opinion is take it down to where it's good and sharp. I've had chains where it's missing a tooth, you break one off. I mean, you know, it'll work for what you're cutting until, it, you know, if it starts to get real crummy on you, then you can change your chain. But I try to typically run them as long as I can. And, um, but that's about all. I hope that helps some people out. I don't know if it does. Might have confused more because I'm not the best teacher or anything like that. But if there's any questions, please just drop them in the comments. And um, let me know what you think of the video or whatever. And hopefully that, like I said, that helps out the people that were asking about it. Hopefully I don't confuse you too much. And um, hey, hopefully we'll get something going here and we can get this out in the woods and get on cutting. So y'all have a great day. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate y'all watching.